Namaste Sagittarius. Your cards are already out. And actually, I have the beginning of your video from previously. Um, but I'm, I really don't want to have to make any quote-unquote movies for these. They're just 15-minute forecasts. So, you know, that's like doing too much um, for me, at least. I apologize. I apologize for that. Um, I experienced something similar to what I experienced with Taurus when I went to do your spread um, in the wee hours of the morning. And that was that the camera overheated. I guess when I cleared the area after Taurus so that I could begin their reading again, um, maybe I was specific to Taurus or to that reading um, or that time and I didn't make it clear that anything that was causing interference need to be gone, period, in, you know, all versions and forms that it was in or that might, it might have been in and, of course, you know, all time, all existence, all space, so, you know, all dimensions. So, now I've done that. We won't have another problem, but I have to show you what we're starting with. So, January... You have, it is safe for you to love, open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all and the energy with which we had um, begun, the first cards that I dropped, soulmate. So we didn't look through the others, just soulmate we're aware of for now. Maybe we'll take a peek at some of the others. Uh, here you have wedding. So that soulmate person that you either met or reconnected with or... Um, continue to ascend with in January who is your soulmate uh, this situation involves marriage and also retreat it's time to disconnect from the world which may have been the two of you together or you know either one of you and possibly you know as a result of separation but not necessarily okay so now let's see what you got for March. I've been skipping ahead. Codependency. Interesting. Addictions are affecting your romantic life, Sagittarius. Keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations. So somebody, Sagittarius, may be clinging to someone that maybe what the codependency is about because they're more comfortable, they're more... You know, they make more logical sense in their life as a mate, as opposed to this other person who may not, who may differ from your usual type and expectations. That's a possibility. And again, for anyone who was in separation, this is directly across from that retreat, um, which I felt may have been not just a retreat, but a separation. There is reconciliation for those people in March. Someone from who, from your past is returning to your life. So if it hasn't happened already in February, it comes to you in March. Let's see what we got in February. Getting to know each other as you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. So you are guided to make the effort, Sagittarius. Great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take. And at the heart of the matter here, give your relationship a chance. Work on your partnership. So I want to see, I guess, more of how we got here. Maybe I'll look at the top row. So here, coupled with it is safe for you to love. Again, we have soulmate. So maybe you were just meeting a person or just reconnecting with somebody. And you're like, oh, I don't know. Last time I got my heart broken. I don't know. That's why it's safe for you to love. Um, this person is indeed your soulmate. And not only is it safe for you to love, you deserve love. You are lovable. For some of you, your love life is being affected by children. Again, perhaps maybe that's upon whom you're codependent. Maybe it's your child's other parent. You're still living with them or something and you don't want to leave them um, because that's comfortable and convenient. But you need to free yourself if that's the case. It's time to take back control of your life, Sagittarius. Because very soon, if you clearly decide what you want, it comes to you now. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. 
that came to you with it is safe for you to love and that led to this situation involves marriage and wedding but what went with that and i said i was going to do the top row i don't know how i ended up like this whatever okay you discovered a, a new passion a passionate relationship was delivered to you by the universe amen allow your heart and soul to sing with joy but love yourself first again if you've been living and loving for other people um because you think that's the right thing to do you haven't wanted to leave an old um mate or you've been taking the ill advice of you know friends and or relatives or something um you got to put yourself first not do what makes more sense to them or is more convenient for them your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive and I think that is indeed what has been happening because someone is wearing a full self mask in this relationship. And it may be you, Sagittarius. Maybe you. It doesn't have to be. Um, it can be the maid as well. But it definitely looks like Sagittarius has been living for other people and loving for other people in many cases from what we've seen so far. I'm going to go ahead and look at this retreat one. It's time to disconnect from the world. Let's see why. Because you have to go within, make some time to be spent with spirit. This situation is calling for you to have faith. So again, there's, it seems that there's many reasons why you would not um, perhaps be with this soulmate or at least someone's helping you to see um, reasons that are really just blocks to you. Um, negativity is, is blocks. That's why you got to have the faith. Don't start to believe them, <laughs> believe in yourself, believe in the promise that was made to you and to all uh, divine unions, people in divine unions by the universe. It's all written. You attract romantic love by enjoying this moment fully. So you continue to send out that happy vibe. Don't let somebody get you down with their bullshit and their, you know, oh, I don't think it's going to work, girl. You know, he usually likes the skinny ones you just gained 20 pounds this is not gonna happen you know don't listen to that kind of <laughs> foolishness and stuff like that um you continue to send out happy vibes don't let anybody bring your vibe down to you know um one that is low and then have that be what you're transmitting and what you receive in return let's see what's going on with codependency so, okay, this is the card that I turned over for you, codependency. However, you are calling in your soulmate. Your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help bring you together. So you need to go ahead and express your love. Go ahead and make the romantic gesture. Even if it doesn't look like it can work and, you, you know, every now and then you start to believe some of these people, some of the voices, maybe even in your own head that say, you know, you're not good enough for them or they're not good enough for you or, you know, any of this 3D stuff. Um, you're guided to not be that pessimist and instead to stay optimistic about your love life. Positive thinking and faith will bring you romance. The same way we just saw the attraction. You send out the um, happy vibes, the good vibes, and that's what comes back to you. Same premise here. So flirt. Extend your lighthearted energy to others. That's what's, with, that's what's coupled with codependency. And I'm going to skip to reconciliation someone from your past is returning to your life let's see what we have in store in that regard finances and career financial issues are a factor right now so maybe the reason that you had it falling out maybe um you felt that you didn't have enough money to be with this person they didn't have enough money to be with you you know um your status didn't match their status in either direction for whatever reason maybe that's what's being healed right now and how financial um, matters are impacting your love life right now. But it is a time of forgiving and learning. That's how we reconcile. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. So Sagittarius, you are guided to let your friends help you. 
the ones you feel you can trust, not these people who have been in your ear with negativity. Ask for and accept support from others. And you know what I do when I feel like, well, who's that? <laughs> I talk to the angels and the archangels. I give them permission to work in my life. Those are my friends. Those are my friends. That's who I hang out with all day. And those are my friends. So give them permission if that's what you, um, if you would like them to help you to act in your life and they can help to, um, and they can intercede in this reconciliation and help to guide you through it. You are also asked and guided to pay attention to the red flags. The signs are cautioning you. Red flags, um, particularly for a fire sign to me can be like wands energy, fire energy as it's, as seen in the tarot. Um, you know, it's usually illustrated with a lot of red, um, being fire sometimes those are the reds the red flags so pay attention to for example five of fire type people these are these people who are usually close friends and or family um who are causing conflict for us in our lives one way or another and they may be these people who are talking down your relationship and things like that um but you also got to pay attention to the you know the positive aspects of fire pay attention to that king of fire energy you know from your divine masculine pay attention to that queen of fire energy from your divine feminine let that guide you pay attention to the four of wands and what would make you happy what would be a happy home for you and it's funny that i'm that i just thought that and said that because now that reminds me that in shuffling my egyptian tarot the energy to which i came is this two of hearts card and this two of hearts card is all about the people um with which we live and or the conditions under with uh which we live or you know how our home how at home do we feel at home how comfortable how pleasing to us um is our home or are we living with people who make us miserable and stuff and again that may indicate that somebody's living with a, a former spouse a former um you know girlfriend boyfriend who may also be the parent um you know the other parent of their child that may be how children are impacting you. But this is all about getting to a place, beginning with your own body, like our body is a vessel, our body is our first home, and treating that well and caring for that. And that includes getting yourself out of stressful, toxic situations as well. And then the actual, you know, place or places um, we dwell in whatever manner. We got to make sure we're doing that in places where we really feel at home comfortable loved we got to go where the love is is what this card says what else comes with this reconciliation honeymoon enjoy the bliss of holiday time together i can't think right now of any holidays in march but perhaps passover maybe in march i, I should have looked that up or and or easter um, sometimes they fall in March. I'm not sure that could be the holiday time or it couldn't be around the moon. So the new moon in March or the full moon in March may be, um, exactly when your reconciliation happens. Why is it happening? Because this is true love. This is the romance of a lifetime. I think lastly, we should take a peek at what's here. At the heart of the month of February, the month on which we're focusing, and the heart of the matter, so to speak. So, give your relationship a chance. Work on your partnership. You're going to have to put some work into it because right now you're in balance. There's not enough attraction or chemistry to keep this relationship going. There are religious factors. Again, maybe somebody doesn't want to divorce. Maybe somebody was brought up where you have to um, marry the man by whom you're pregnant or you have to marry the woman that you impregnate, um, you know, whether there's love there or not. Um, you know, you can't leave your child's other parent. You have to take care of your parents, you know, even if they could really take care of themselves and they're taking advantage of you, um, you know, but if they want you around to help them, quote unquote, help them, you feel bad. Like you have to do that. You can't ever leave and live your own life. Or sometimes we feel equally as guilty about children and we got grown children and we're going to take care, we, care of them forever because we gave birth to them and we're responsible for them. We're not responsible for them, you know, past a certain time. And, and even if, you know, we move the legal part of it, 
you're never going to stop being a person's parent, but you don't have to parent um, an adult. <laughs> you don't have to raise an adult, or you shouldn't have to. You know, give yourself enough credit that you did a good job already, and you know, a pat on the back, and go and live your life now if you've done raising them. Have heart to heart conversations. Um, if you avoid the heart to heart conversations, then that puts each of you in a place where you're uncomfortable. So again, thinking about where we dwell, even in a like, you know, metaphorical sense, if we're uncomfortable, we're going to leave that place. When we do that, that's from where separation comes. Time apart from your partner is on the horizon. So that's why you need to reconcile the month later. And it's right here, diagonal to it, touching it. You know, it's definitely connected. And it seems to be exactly for the reason for which I said. Time has come to clear your energy. Release your ex, Sagittarius. Let go of the control issues and instead allow this situation to unfold naturally. You'll have a much um, more enjoyable ride on this journey if you do. So again, I'm going to pull you a card from my Egyptian tarot as well, beginning with the energy of this Two of Hearts, which is all about... Um, being happy in our, um, within our own vessels, our own bodies, and any other place we choose to dwell at all times. If, if there's no love there, we are guided to leave. And that reminds me, yesterday, I heard the song by uh, Keisha Cole that I hadn't heard in a while. Uh, enough with no love. I can't stay here if there's no love. You know, enough with no love. I think that was, she made that song before she got married, I believe, and had the child. Um, yeah, so that's what, that's the message that's coming through here. Enough with no love. Get out of that place um, that's not a happy home. And it's funny that I came to this energy for you guys as well. Um, because this card is all about learning how to love yourself first before you attempt to love someone else. If you've been hurt, you don't want to take it out on this new person, this soulmate. So it is very important that you spend the time that you do have alone, uh, quote unquote, retreat. Um, going within, talking to your, you know, spirit guides, to the universe, to God, getting grounded in nature, maybe actually going outside if you live in an area that's conducive to that, learning you first, and then being open to learning someone else without um, maybe attaching baggage to them from you know a prior situation or prior person, and giving each person their um, rightful chance, each person you know to be in your life that you're interested in, um, their rightful chance to prove themselves to you um, and not, you know, going in with like these preconceived notions about how a woman or a man is going to behave and or treat you. Like allow the next one to treat you nice. I had, speaking of Sagittarians, I got to tell you this story real quick. So my like quote unquote near twin, my karmic soulmate, um, like the the big one <laughs> of my life. We met when I was like, you know, just about 15. And we were together for all of my high school years, all those years, um, until we were about 20 when something happened that broke us up. We didn't break up. Something pulled us apart for several years. And then we met again um, and, you know, still had the feelings because, again, we had never broken up. So we had to work through that. In any case... <laughs> it was kind of like a twin flame journey. Um, and had I known about quote unquote twin flames or, you know, divine unions prior, I probably would have thought it was him. I learned about divine unions after I met my twin. And it was because the universe literally like kept rubbing my face in it with this twin flame stuff. I was getting emails from angels and, and don't even ask text messages from angels. The angels are 666666666. And I'm like, huh? 
what is this? Like from a number zero, 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 zero. It, you know, it was insane. Um, but they ended up telling me about Twin Flames, the angels. Um, in any case, that's not what I was going to say. So I would have thought that this man was my quote unquote Twin Flame. Um, had I learned about their existence first, I would have said, oh, that's definitely our relationship, right? Because it was a tumultuous one, um, to say the least, um, but very passionate also. So one day, a couple years ago, I couldn't take it anymore. And this is not, um, this is before I met my twin, probably like the year prior, not before I met him, but before we connected and realized what we were at all. Um, I, it was Thanksgiving and you know, the, the Friday, the black Friday, that's when it was about three years ago, black Friday, he called me to go out. And I never sleep. I think I started your video saying I never sleep, maybe. Or right before I did this video, I was telling somebody else that. Um, but I had fallen asleep, strangely. And, well, maybe not strangely, because on Thanksgiving, I, I usually stand up over the stove and cook for like 24 hours. So anyway, um, I had fallen asleep, so I missed his call. So when I called him back, when I opened my eyes and called him back, really not much later, maybe like 20 minutes later, he had such an attitude over the phone that I didn't answer when he called me the first time or, you know, when he reached out, I'm so pissed. Like, just forget it. So I guess I had had enough, enough of no love at that point. And I was like, you know what? I don't fucking need this. I'm cute. <laughs> I'm cute. You know, I am got I'm shaped nice. I'm smart. I got my own money, you know, I don't need any help from anybody. I don't, I'm not trying to, I'm not a gold digger. I'm not trying to live off a man. I'm just trying to, you know, enjoy one's company and love one and be loved by one. I don't need this bullshit from you anymore. We're done. Now, of course, we weren't done permanently at that point. But at the moment, I thought I was. And that was a Friday. The Monday, walking home from an event with, with a friend. I had a friend that was running for public office and I had gone to do like an infomercial for her so in support of her. And I was walking home from that and I met this guy on the street. Now, you know, when guys cat call you on the street, most of us females, um, we're not interested in that usually. Um, at least I wasn't. Let me speak for myself. I typically was not interested in that. Um, and this time, initially, I was not interested in that either. I continued walking. And I got maybe about 15 feet away from this guy. And I stopped and turned around. And walked back. Okay, so this is like, <laughs> if you know me at all, it's like, what? <laughs> I turned and walked back to this man. I'd only done that one other time. Ironically, for the ex-boyfriend, this the, the quote-unquote near twin, the karmic soulmate. He's the only person, the day that I met him, I had crossed the street also and decided, wait a minute, like go back and talk to that guy. And that's what I did. I went back across the street. So anyway, he, me and this guy start talking and he's like, um, can I buy you a drink? Now I had never gone with a man for a drink before, like the man that I didn't know. Or even like, a, I don't, I had never even like really dated. Cause I just said, I met my karmic soulmate when I was like 15. I've been with like, as far as relationships, very, I have like that, that ex-boyfriend, um, maybe like two others that I considered, you know, serious or something. Um, one of which is my husband, <laughs> my ex-husband and my twin, you know, um, as far as like real quote unquote relationships of any sort. So in any case, um, I had never like really even dated and I said, yes. And I text my friends. They were all in this, like, um, we had like a group on Facebook, but it was like people that I knew people that were, I considered my friends all in the same group, a small group. And I posted in there that I was going on a date with a strange man. <laughs> so we walked to a local, um, restaurant, uh, bar. And right away, he's being very possessive over me. Um, even though we hadn't, I didn't, I didn't know this man, but very possessive, very, the way he walked, the way he like guarded me. He didn't want anybody else near me. Like, you know, we didn't want any other 
men to accidentally bump into me, touch me, even by mistake. So that was a little weird, um, but sort of impressive at the same time. And he says to me, um, who's treating you like a queen? I said, nobody. And he said, you're like, well, somebody should be. And I had said those words actually to the ex-boyfriend when I broke up with him over the phone. I had said like, you know, somebody should be treating me like a queen. And here came this guy. So we go in, we have the drinks. We have one drink. Um, then we have another. And he's like, you know, let's have another. And I'm like, uh-uh. I haven't had dinner. I, I cannot be drinking like this. Because I drink straight vodka, too. So he's like, well, let me take you to dinner. And I'm like, huh? What? Like, this can't be really happening. Um, it was happening. He took me to dinner. And while we're waiting for our food to come, he's like, let's go for a walk. I'm like, a walk? Who does that? Like, the, the whole thing was just crazy. Who goes for a walk while they're waiting for, you know, the, the server to bring their meal? He's like, we're just going to go, like, outside for a little bit. So we went outside. And we started to walk up the block. And there was, like, one of these storefronts. There was a florist. He bought me a dozen roses. Then his brother calls. He puts me on. He introduces me to the brother over the phone. Has me talk to him. I mean, you know, it was like instant. It was like Prince Charming. And I, I ended up calling him Prince Charming. But guess what? He was a Sagittarius. He was the knight of fire. He was the knight of fire. We don't have to. It, this is how instant um, the manifestation of new vibes, good vibes, healthy vibes, love vibes can be. This is how instant. We don't have to necessarily wait um, for good things to come into our life. When we clear our energy, when we let go of control issues and release our ex, wonderful things can happen for us. But it has to be like for real. Like I said, I ended up you know, speaking to my ex again later on. But in that moment, it was for real. I was so very done. I was, please go away from me. I deserve so much better than this. And when the universe heard me say that and felt that I was being, you know, truthful about it, they rewarded me with somebody who was going to treat me 10,000 times better. 10,000 times better. He even ended up taking me out for his birthday. I wanted to take him out. I wanted to pay. He didn't let me pay. And my girlfriend came too. Because I was like, I don't really know this guy that well yet. <laughs> you know, I met him in November. His birthday was December. He was, a, again, he was a Sagittarius, December 13th. Exactly six months from mine. I'm June 13th. And I'm a mirror image of a Sagittarius. That's what Gemini is. Sag Gemini and Sagittarius are mirror signs. So, um, that's that story. I hope that you guys find it helpful that, you know, because, oh, you see? And your card is actually one about the fact that you guys need healing. Another sign had this too. That you guys need healing. Sagittarius. Let me get the book so that I can read it to you. But basically, this is King Osiris. I recognize King Osiris. Um, one way that you can learn to recognize him is his feet. His legs are usually mummified. And then he always has this crook and flail. And the... Um, like Pope shaped hat <laughs> as opposed to some of the, um, the others that are like hanging. He always has this, um, sort of hat. And this guy seems to be healing this other one, sending him white light through this ankh, which is the key to life. And I think that you guys need someone to send you some light, white light, pure light, um, you know, you've been around too many shadows, it seems. And maybe even in, maybe the, even from within, right? Your own vessel, your own home within. This is the longest video I've done um, for anyone, by the way, Sagittarius. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe a lot of it is yourself. And I've talked about this recently, about this thing about embracing shadows. I completely agree with that. We have to embrace shadows. But a lot of people teach uh, and believe that we have to also hold on to them for balance. Why? This is my question. Why, why should we do this? Jesus did not do that. He did not do that. He did not hold on to dark. Where have you read in any scripture, even in the other religions, if you look in the Quran where they talk about Jesus, they, he's a highly revered prophet. 
in the Quran. Highly revered. Not a person of the dark. At all. Um, the same thing, <laughs> even in like, you know, the Torah. They, he, they mentioned he's a prophet. He's just not the Messiah to, you know, most Jews. There are Jews for Jesus as well. But to most Jews, he's not the Messiah. But he's a highly revered prophet. He's not a person of the dark. And if you believe anything about it, and if you're trying to achieve Christ consciousness like him, shouldn't you attempt to be Christ-like? So this thing about holding on to the, we got to let that go. We got to let all this anger and bitterness from the past and hurt and so-and-so did this to me 50 years ago and I'm still pissed about, let that go. Let it all go. Wash it away. Heal it away. Um, so that you can enjoy your life because you, you're punishing yourself when you hold on to that. That's who's hurting um, at the end of the day is you. So this card, Sagittarius, the king of clubs, is called Doctor. The Ankh used to heal. Man of authority. An expert who is useful to us. Our alliance with him must be firm and strong from the start. But at the same time, we must understand his intentions. We mustn't let ourselves get caught up in the power that can corrupt everyone, especially those who exercise authority. Advice. Two suggestions from ancient Egypt. Try to be healed, accepting advice and real physical care. Let somebody love you, right? First, and begin with you. First, you learn to love yourself and then let somebody else love you. And that's exactly what it says here. After it says, try to be healed, accepting advice and real physical care from someone else. It says, then become a doctor for another person yourself. Naturally, you need to take care of the situation, the feelings and emotions. The transformation into soul doctors will leave a sweet taste. I hope that you find this forecast helpful for you in navigating the next couple months of your life. Namaste, Sagittarius.